That sounds ridiculous. That's amazing. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. Hello. This is the first. Just do that again, Dan. Uh, Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Way over. Way over on the mics there. Okay. Min minimal shouting today, I think. All right. Um, uh, this is the first video we've made in 2019. It is. Proper video. Anyway, we've done a few, pick a couple of um, VCQs, but anyway, proper first video. So happy new year to everybody. Yeah. And uh, I think we need to share a bit of um, Bon Viveur or something. Okay. Because it is the crappest time of the year, isn't it? It's a harsh time of the it's year. It's rubbish. Christmas it's, is done. Yeah. Now it's just cold and dark. Yeah, cold, dark. And uh, so if you're feeling in some way with the new year blues, we send you feelings of glad tidings and happiness and hopefully some inspiration with yeah definitely with, Very with cool. sound yeah as as i've just had that felt good that felt good man today is the wet dry mega video not just any wet dry video is it Dan? <laughs> no if carlsberg made wet dry videos <laughs> so if you want to set yourselves up for a fall this is how to do it <laughs> uh, and why are we doing this we use wet dry a lot we both personally use wet dry rigs it's such an inspiring sound uh there have been so many questions uh and so today what are those questions well the questions are about signal path splitting the signal path isolation phase so i've i've done diagrams i've got finger puppets i've got chorus girls chorus people i should say yeah just be inclusive um it's the whole shebang to try and give you a fundamental understanding of what you can do with that one. what we call wet dry <laughs> wet dry video wet dry <laughs> rigs okay um sorry which one the one with the red light on it that one with the red the light in on the middle it. not the one that simon stood by okay yeah okay You'd think I'd know by now. Yeah. How many videos have we done now, Simon? You'd think I'd get that right? Too many. No. Okay. Um, how, how are you feeling about the DB meter, Simon? All good. Is it happy? We've yeah. put it over there for the time being. So let's see, um, let's let's see how see. much hate. We let's can... see how upset the <laughs> internet gets about that. <laughs> um, it, it, you're right. It does need to be in the pedal board area, but um, I don't think it's got an external microphone input on it. So anyway, whatever. It is there for the time being. It is a source of... Um, reference if nothing else right Dan so the big questions are mm -hmm. where do I split my signal mm -hmm. how do I split my signal yes and what happens when I split my signal yes and what about wet dry wet and yes and the 100% wet and all that stuff as anything well. else we're going to cover uh are we going to talk about effects loops we can we can definitely talk about effects loops um uh, yes okay Absolutely. yes all right I think he's got a plan so we start from the beginning let's start from the beginning right I've laid this out at the moment. So you see we have the page, the DNM drive, the CE1, the trem, the timeline delay, and the reverb. So that is, at the moment, the order of the pedals. Fairly standard okay. order of pedal. Drives, yep. modulation, yep. Um, and then... Delays into reverb. Other stuff. Yep, other stuff. So... We, we, we usually do say you should put your uh, tremolo after your delay, don't we? We do. I've, I've just simply put it up this because I wanted to do... Um, stereo delay. A, yeah, I've got stereo delays and reverbs. And no, so, no, no rules, kids. No, exactly. Right, so at the moment, what we'll do is we will... Uh, we're just going to set this up as you would with one amplifier. Okay, so at the moment... And so the amplifiers we're using today, um, Mick, if you just want to have Schwang on this one. So this is the uh, the Sovtech MiG-50. Beautiful. This is the Two Rock. And in the center we have the Marshall. Okay, can I hear those with your guitars? Because I'm not getting any treble out of those two. Okay. Yep, that's the Sovtech. Two Rock. The 
Marshall. Okay, so this guitar is quite a lot duller sounding than that one, which is the case for all the guitars I own, so we'll just have to bear that in mind. Okay. <laughs> um, Obvious question first then, what is wet dry? Okay. Wet dry is basically when you are sending, in the simplest terms, when you're sending different signals to different amplifiers. Okay. The dry part of the amplifier, uh, or the dry part of the signal, is a signal that contains the gain effects. In our right? definition. In our definition. Yeah, this is our definition, because it varies, right? It, look, absolutely. Wet dry, you can just say different signals, you know. But the, what we say, the dry part of the signal is that that doesn't contain wet effects. It right. doesn't contain things like delays and <clears throat> reverbs. It can contain modulation. It doesn't have to contain modulation. The idea is that you've got a, a split somewhere in the signal, and that split sends the signal to what we call the dry amplifier, and then the effects after that go to the wet amplifier. So oh, right. in our world, drives, compressors, fuzzes, Wah, they're all dry effects. Yep. Delays and reverbs are definitely wet effects. Yes. And modulation for me is always wet. Right. But for some people, it could be damp. It could be damp. Because I like that. You could either have it going to the the, the wet amp or the dry amp or uh, however you like it. But, exactly. But personally, for me, I run all modulation, all delay, all reverb in the wet amp, and the only thing that hits the dry amp is overdrive. Okay. Same for you. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So if we, if we, I'm going to get you to play for a second. And so why do we do that? Sorry, just before we get into it. Why do we do that? The idea is that the wet effects, uh, they they have the ability to take away a bit of definition from the sound. But if you've got one amplifier that's dry that doesn't have the wet effects in, then that will always sit proud yeah. of the wet effects. Uh, so that you can have, you know, lots of delays and reverbs and it doesn't end up being mushy, mm. you know. So you hit, like the really good example of what you played at the, at the beginning. There was a lot of gain there and there was a lot of effect on that. But that the, the sound of the guitar and everything just sat proud yeah. of those big delays. That is definitely how it works for me and why I use it is because I like quite a lot of effect on stuff. Sure. Be that a modulation or a delay. Yeah. And, I, and I'm sure, as you guys find... If the more effect you use, the more lost your guitar sound sure. gets. And exactly what you just said, yep. by splitting that out wet and dry, you have independent control on each and it can sound all at once giant, mm -hmm. absolutely massive, but still lovely and wet and still clear and defined. It's yep. like a whole bunch of... And that's just wet dry. So yeah. apologies for that's okay, that's okay. slowing so, you down. No, but no, let's, let's all good. Let's set it out from the beginning. To, to demonstrate that, I'm just going to throw a few effects on. You can see how they all go into the two rock. Okay, this is like a normal rig. You know, yep. you've got one amplifier. All your effects. God, imagine that there. only using one amplifier. <laughs> right. <laughs> so the <bit of> page. <laughs> Man, that, that harmony part just get we're doing that in the band set and it just it all feels wrong until you hear it with the main Yeah, yeah, you've got to yeah. hear it together. Anyway, uh okay, so, so where did we get to? That so basically that's just showing you that we have all those effects and they are going into the two rock. All into one amp. And actually okay. with them all on, can you just turn them all on again? Yep. It, it definitely did sound kind of all over the place. Oh, absolutely. Okay. I want to do the same thing into the um, into the soft tech. Yep. It certainly doesn't sound bad, but there's a lot of there's a lot going on, yeah, and you yeah, can yeah, see yeah. how. I remember when I was when I was gigging in Sydney, and there's lots of really great guitar players, and people would say, um, you know how. What was his tone like? And a word that I would hear all the time was processed. Oh, interesting. Right? 
And so you can hear that if you have a lot going on, that you could equate that to being a processed signal. Yeah. Right. I mean, there are things you could do there. You could turn the delay level down. You could, Absolutely. You could lessen off the effects. Absolutely. Which will become relevant as we go go along. Yeah. I yeah. Absolutely. Assume. So that's that's <clears throat> a basic setup. Our yep. pedals are going straight to the amplifier. Now, for the wet dry thing, what we're going to do is we're going to split our signal. So. If you, I'm going to put the diagram up now, and what we're going to do is we're going to split it. First of all, we're going to split it after the modulation effects. Okay, so if you can see, we've got the page going to the DNM drive. We have our modulation effects here. Then we're going to split the signal. Okay. All right. So we're using a humding and a split. As long as you've got, as long as the splitter has got uh, an input two outputs, one of those outputs has to be isolated and phase reversible. Okay, we're going to get into phase in a second, but at the, so at the moment you can see in the diagram we have split the signal, and that split signal is now going to the marshal. I'm just going to say that again. If you use a splitter box, it must have, well, I'm going to repeat what he said, it, it needs to have one input, two outputs, one of those outputs needs to be phase reversible and isolated. Exactly. Okay, yeah, and yeah. there are various things that do that. The gig rig humdinger does it. Gig rig AB baby does it. The full tone A true ABY does it. Yep. There's yep. a radial pedal that does it. Yeah, I think it's. There's, there'll definitely be a Layla one that does it. Absolutely. So there are many many devices that do this. Yep. Either in the humdinger's case, there's no switch on it, so it's just constant. It's it's all the time doing it mm -hmm. on uh, on something like the gig rig AB baby. Um, you, you can, can switch the outputs. You can switch the outputs and yeah. have them on and off. So there are no, a number of devices that can do that. But the important thing about those devices, the the uh, second output has to be isolated, because so in this setup we're using three amplifiers, and you can hear that there's no hums, there's no earth loops going on. Uh, in a situation where you have multiple amplifiers, if you don't isolate, you, you have one amplifier has to be earthed. Mm. and everything else has to be isolated from that. But you, uh, whatever you do, don't just cut the yeah, yeah. earth from it. It just has to be, you know, transform or isolated. That's the proper way to do it. There are a number, you know, people will be going, oh, the way you can do it is this. The way you can do it is that. The way you can do it is this. The way to do it is get a device that does it properly from your pedal board. And, and don't think about and it. Just anymore. don't think about it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so if we have a listen to the Marshall now, so this is the Marshall on its own. God, it sounds dark with this guitar. Um, it's running through the UA Ox because we wanted to get a little bit of hair on it um, at sensible volume. But you listen to it with Dan's guitar a sec. So that for me, that's the best that bit, amplifier has ever sounded. It sounds mega. Lighter. Sounds ace. Nope. I thought that sounded great. There's only one thing for it. I'm going to have to get a guitar with some treble in it, I'm afraid, because uh, none of my guitars have anything like as much stuff as Red does. Now, normally we say that it doesn't matter what guitars and amps we use, because we all plug it into the same thing and it all works. But the situation that it doesn't work is today for reasons I'm not quite sure. Yeah. But. Hopefully this has got a bit more trouble. Cool. Bucket loads. Better. Right. So. It'll all change when we turn the other two amps on again, but. <laughs> so that's the Marshall on its own. Now, if we hear the Marshall with, let's say, the two rock. <laughs> Would you mind turning it on and off? Yep. Is that possible? The two rock? Yeah. Yep. Good. 
Groovy. Much happier. Right. <laughs> so, so what we're going to do now with the the two rock and the Marshall on together. Right now, this is this is what we would call an, a wet dry setup. Okay. So actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put that over here. There's my split, and there's my two rock. All right. Just explain that because you've got the humdinger. Okay. This, in this loop split five. is in loop five. Yeah, yeah. So that's my split there. So loop one, loop two, loop three. Yep. Loop four. Yep. Split comes in loop five. That's right. Loop five. That's Great. right. Uh, then these are in loop nine and loop ten. Yep. Okay. So this is our direct sound. It's split. So at the moment we don't have any pedals on. It's just the we've just split the signal. Yep. Um, because we don't have any pedals on. The amplifiers are receiving exactly the same signal. Okay. Now, if I put a pedal on that is before the humdinger, both amplifiers again are going to receive the same thing. So if I turn the page on, for example, and the DNM drive. Okay, now at the moment we've got the the chorus and tremolo are again before the split. So if we turn the tremolo on, for example, so the, again the tremolo is going to both amplifiers, but the delay and reverb is after the split. Okay, so if I turn the delay on now, the delay is only going to go to the two rock. So again, our signal path, guitar is going in here, let's turn the page on, guitar is going through the page, that hits the, the split of the humdinger, that isolated output is going to the Marshall, the buffered output goes in, it's like further on down the signal, and then that hits the delay, and then that comes out and hits the two rock. Okay, so if you play that, and then I'm going to turn on the delay. This is the Marshall by itself. So that's what we were hearing then, but then the Marshall, um, with it, uh, just to demonstrate that, if I turn the Marshall on and I turn the delay on, nothing. Because the split is happening before the delay line. Okay, but I turn on the Marshall and the two rock together and turn the delay on. There's a lot of delay there, Mega. but it sounds awesome. It does really sound because that direct signal from your guitar is hitting the Marshall. Yep, and that's always there. The delay is sitting on top of that, so, and that's the difference. That is the very basic, the uh, you know wet dry thing, separating that wet sound, the delay sound. Okay, I got two questions at this point. Yes, one is. Um, how do you choose what goes wet and what goes dry? The, the standard thinking is that anything that has a delay in it, we you know we can use as a wet effect. Yeah. So you know the obvious thing is delays and reverbs. When it comes to modulation, it's just it's it is literally experiment, see what you like. Yeah, yeah. Um, but certainly, um, you know things like. All right, let's have a look at let's have a look at some modulation stuff. So we're going to try that before and after? Yeah, we'll try that before and after. Before we do that, the second question is, yep. 
Can we talk about phase? Yes, okay. Because we've introduced two amplifiers and a huge point of confusion for everybody is how do I know if my amps are in phase? We're going to do the, oh, oh, you, what's it? Let's do that. Okay, okay so uh, you've got two amplifiers and each one has, let's say for argument's sake, one speaker in it. Yep. Dan is one speaker, I'm the other speaker. Okay. If the amps are in phase, this is how the speaker is moving. This is how the speakers are moving. <laughs> right. Now, I'm going to be relatively out of phase with Mick. Okay? So here we go. Now, what's happening here is as mix, as the cone of mixed speaker is pushing forward, mine is pulling back. Right? Now, what happens is you get what we call phase cancellation. The easiest way to find this, when you have a, a two amplifiers and you have a device that flips the phase... The easiest way to tell if it's in phase or not is just basically listening to the bottom end. In one circumstance, it's going to sound full and big when we're doing this together, right? But when, I, when I'm out of phase with you, it's going to sound thin and weedy. Now... If only we could demonstrate that, Dan. <laughs> if only we could demonstrate it sonically. Okay, let's do that then. Um, I'm oh, going come on, to... mime is money. <laughs> I love that film. I love that film. Um, okay, so here we go. We've got the Marshall and the Turocon together. I should play an E major chord to keep everybody happy, including me. My favourite chord ever. One of the best E major chords ever is on the end of Teenage Dirtbag by Weezer. Oh, however it goes. Do. -hoo. Okay, call it up on Spotify and listen to that E major chord at the end. It's, it's just a beautiful thing. Uh, Someone's going to tell me it's now F. The, <laughs> guitar's, the guitar's tuned up. Sounds like E major to me. Okay, so while you're playing your beautiful E major chord, I'm now going to flip the phase yep. on the Marshall. Can we just keep it clean for a second? Is that all right? Oh, yes, of course. Of yep. course. Yep, yep, there we yep. Go. Right. Tell you what's interesting about that yeah. is is it's really um, relative to where you sit. So the one that the one that you think is out of phase sounds in phase to me. Okay. And I think that's because the two rock gets louder because the Marshall goes out of phase. Is it? Yeah. Also, if you listen to the frequency of the Marshall compared to the frequency of the, of the two rock, if they were exactly the same amplifier with exactly the same sound, then it would be it would be really easy. Mm. But when you have really different sounding amplifiers, then it becomes a lot more difficult. Yep. Also, if you have uh, different speakers yep. in them, it becomes a lot more difficult. Yeah, because well. we've got four uh, in there, mm -hmm. and we've got one in there. Yeah, and different types and ten inch versus twelve inch. Trying yeah. to work out the phase between a ten inch and a twelve inch speaker yeah. can be really tricky. Yeah, because it's not always just directly out and in phase. It, there are phase relationships within that uh, completely out and completely in. Absolutely. And that was a really good live example of you'll do it and you'll go, oh, I'm not sure. Not sure, not sure. When you hear it in the audio, it will be chalk and day. Right, there you go. You will hit, you will, you'll hear it like it will be so obvious, it will be embarrassing. So if you just if you so what I'm going to do, I'm going to set the phase between all three amplifiers. Okay. Okay. So now we're introducing a third amp. So, but only for the only for the purposes of phase. Only at for this the point. only for the purposes to show you how we set the phase between the three amplifiers. So if you're using two amps, plug them both in. Get a device that reverses the phase on one and just flick it in both directions. Walk around a bit and see which one you think has the bigger, fuller bass. Mm -hmm. And that's usually the one that's most in phase, right? Perfect. So you'll have one amplifier that is your earth. There's, there'll be no phase flipping on that. So we start with that amplifier. Yeah. Okay. So this is the, the soft tech at the moment. That's the earth. Um, so if you can just play me your big E chord there. Beautiful. So that's the soft tech. We're going to add now the uh, the two rock to that. Again, another way to tell is the sound of one amp kind of goes away. Yeah. Which is what happened there. Yeah. So where I'm sat, all I could then hear was the two rock, and I couldn't hear the soft tech, which means it's probably out of phase. Right. There you go. So. 
Should be conclusive, I would have thought. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, now we're going to add the third amplifier to that mix yep. and change the phase on the third amplifier to make sure that sits in with that. So, okay. And now, that will be in phase with either of the other two. Exactly. Well, it will be relatively in phase. Relatively Because you've got two choices. You've got this or that. Exactly. Haven't you? Yeah. So you've got to choose whether it's this or that. Yeah. So relatively in phase. Should we say that? Rel yeah, perfect. Because if you had some physicist in here with a white coat and a, some sort of measuring device, they wouldn't be perfectly in phase. No. Depending it, it, on where you stand in the room and or, what the reflections are. Exactly. And, exactly. And how, yeah. you know, the distance that, like... One of the things that you'll see with the amplifiers, we always set them up so that they're uh, parallel with each other. Yeah. As soon as you start moving an amplifier backwards and forwards, then you introduce another time feature, which then moves the phase around again. So, uh, as you've said many times, if you're playing in a hall or somewhere that's got a reflective back wall, that that sound coming back at you is out yep, of phase. So right. you're sat there, you're going, oh, I wonder if I'm in phase or not, and actually you're hearing the reverb off the back wall as much, or the delay off the back wall as much as you are hearing what's coming out of there. So it's not. It's it's tricky, isn't it? It is tricky, and if you Absolutely. if you struggle with it, that's that's why because it is tricky. There's an old there's an old four by twelve trick that you if you have a master four by twelve, you get one of the speakers and you turn it out of phase. Hmm. So uh, it's it sort of cancels things out, but allows you to turn the amp up louder, <laughs> and you stick a microphone. So when you're on stage. It's things are okay, but the, with the microphone in front of one of the speakers, it's banging. Oh, okay. You know, but yeah, it's really interesting. Really, yeah, yeah, interesting. yeah, yeah. So that's the phase. Okay. You know, and uh, the other question that's probably coming up at this point: How do you decide um, which is your Mother Earth amp? Uh, it it doesn't really matter if you've got a really good AB box, then the signals coming out uh, of both are going to be mirror images. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. It's funny if you see the, if you see one as main and one as secondary, secondary, yeah, or whether yeah, you yeah. see them both as equally important. For me, at the moment, running wet dry, I run everything wet through the two rock. Yeah. So that's like that's home. Yeah. And if, sure. If the engineer's got one mic, that's where it goes. Sure. And the the dry amp for me is the nice to have. Yeah. Therefore, right. that, that's my amp too, and that's the one I flip the phase on personally. Because I want to make sure all the effects and everything is right and at home in the first one. At perfect. And then and then what you can do then is you can turn up your dry amp to taste. Yeah. You know, the the wet amplifier becomes your core yeah. home tone. Yeah. And then the dry amplifier literally becomes that the poking through. Yeah. Um, but again, that is all, you know, me saying that... It means exactly the opposite is also completely valid. Yes. You know. Yeah. Um, right. So, okay. Taste. No rules. Once again, no rules. No, exactly. Just know that one is home, one is ground, and the other one is phase reversible isolated. Perfect. In a two amp situation. Perfect. And in a three amp situation, one is home, one is ground. The other two are isolated and phase reversible. Perfect. Correct? Perfect. Awesome. Nailing it. Okay. So what we've done is we have split our signal after the modulation pedals for this. We've just had the delay yep. and reverb going into the wet amplifier. Everything else has been going into both. Okay. Just to just to reiterate that fact, the wet amplifier is receiving, is still receiving the gain pedals. It's still receiving um, the the tremolo pedals, but it's also receiving the delays and reverbs. Yep. Whereas the dry amplifier at this point is is receiving the drive pedals and the modulation pedals. That comes down to where we've split the signal. Yep. Now, what we can do, because we've got the humdinger in a loop here, I can actually move the position of the humdinger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the position of the uh, the humdinger is now after the gain pedals, but before the modulation pedals. This is how I do it. Right, okay. So let's have a listen to that. Um, again, this is just the Marshall and the two rock on together. Again, we turn the, the page on. That's going to go to both amplifiers. Yeah, baby.
we'll talk about gain in a minute, but a really interesting thing about that is the page is pushing that Marshall into quite heavy overdrive. But and not it's basically just tickling the two. Yeah, off. yeah, yeah. Okay, but now what we're going to do, we're going to turn the tram on. But because the humdinger is split after the game pedals, but before the tram, the tram is only going to be going to the two rock. Okay, so. <laughs> You know what's so interesting about that? We we just redone a bit because I said something confusing and I need to unconfuse it. Um, it. The reason I run my modulations after the split is because they, to me, they actually sound bigger and wider when they're only going into one, one amplifier, amp, which is counterintuitive. Well, let's because you would think going into both amps, yeah, it would be bigger and wider, but actually going into one, what it creates. It's a whole bunch of new phase relationships and t tone relationships between the two amps. And you would swear blind if you were sat here that that tremolo is coming out of the Marshall. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and can you prove that it's yeah, not? Please, okay, Dan. so here we go. So this is the uh, the tram, uh, the page is on and the tram, and this is going to be going into uh, both amplifiers. <laughs> I see what I love about that is the trem set quite I deliberately turned the um, depth up a bit right. so that it was much more off and on. Sure. Uh, to use an old British gas quote, much more off and honourable. And uh, and turn the speed down so you could really hear it obviously. Mm -hmm. Now what that creates when you play is a very staccato sound. So sure. you might not hear the first bit of your note because it might be in the down. Down the dip. Yeah. But when you switch it into both amps, you then get some back. Sure. And to me, the whole thing just starts doing that yeah, yeah. In, a, in a huge way. And it becomes, for me personally, it becomes much more playable. It's, it is such a beautiful sounding thing mm. because like you're saying, no matter, no matter what you're playing, the, the time becomes less relevant. Yes. Because you've got the, t the attack is, you can get attack all the time, no matter in, yep. what you know phase the, the tremolo uh, modulation's at. Yeah. But that thing where you've got the turn coming here and then this tremolo is doing this, it just sets up this image. And what I also love about that is it's not, it's not the stereo thing that you've, that it's dependent on, you know, both sides being equally loud and, and you've got this one amplifier doing its own thing, you know, the, the wet amplifier and then, sorry, the dry amplifier doing its own thing and then the wet amplifier doing a completely separate thing. And this is what I love about wet dry as opposed to stereo rigs. Yeah. Because the wet dry, you can literally use any two amplifiers. Yeah. And I would I I'd actually say that having amplifiers with different characters, so we've got the Marshall that's got a little bit of gain in it. Yeah. Right? Just it just compresses nicely when you dig in. Yeah, as we said, we've attenuated it um, using the UA aux there, just using the attenuation function so that we can drive it a little bit harder so it gets a bit um, more overdrive. -y. Yeah, yeah. But the two rock is much more open. And the, the character of those two together, and, and again, it, it comes down to finding, you know, one of the great things about two amplifiers, finding your own sound, mm -hmm. being able to mix things together, then just adding a wet dry rig into that relationship. It's, yeah. I, I, I'm such a massive fan of it. Yeah. Um, let's try it with the chorus, right? But what I'm going to do, is I'm going to turn the the chorus off. I'm going to go to the the vibrato mode. Oh, wicked! Okay. okay. So, which can be quite a, you know a lot of people find vibrato a very sort of seasick sort of sound because it's modulating the whole of the pitch, right? That's right. So, yeah, are we okay. all, are we? So let's. Now, we're just going to hear the vibrato into the wet amplifier.
It just, it's cool sound on its own going into both amps. Yeah. It's, a, you know, I'm sure there's many uses for it, but I just find when it's going in, going into one amp and you retain, I mean, you're running it in parallel, isn't it? It's what you're, you're, you're essentially exactly. only having the effect on one thing. So couldn't you just turn down the um, intensity of the effect or if you had a parallel option, turn up your dry signal a bit more? Yes, possibly, but it's but not you're still, the but same But the effect thing, is still it? hitting both amplifiers yeah, if you yeah. do that. What we're talking about is that modulation only hitting one. So we're hearing the Marshall on its own with the drive pedals doing its thing and then the modulation moving in that one yeah, in one yeah. amplifier. And the effect that gives you is mega. It's massive. It's wonderful. It's really massive. If we if, if we just do that again, I'm going to add a bit of delay onto the end of that as well. Yep. So again, um, delay and trem both coming out of the wet amplifier and the page is going out of both. It's huge. It's just, it's ridiculous. I mean, a couple of practical um, things come to mind at this point, which we'll probably get into a bit more in the in the wet dry wet thing. But you know, I can't do that. My band's got way too much of a dense mix. There's no way there's room for all that in there. Fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you probably just go a little bit less wet. But if you play in a See, I think anything you... remotely ambient or a trio or somewhere something that you need to fill space in mm. absolutely but i think if you're in a dense mix that makes more sense right because your direct sound is going to poke through that dense mix more yeah it's almost like you know when, when you um if you listen to a record being mixed or produced the amount of wet applied to a lot of the stuff is in the mix massive it's, it's I mean, incredible it's, it's laughable you'll hear yeah. guitar parts that you think are this really raw awesome guitar sound and then you hear it isolated and you hear like this massive stereo <laughs> ping pong delay going on in the background which has been added on so maybe it's kind of a, almost a live version of that in a way yeah the other thing that engineers really like having a dry mix and a wet mix right um and then they can control the level of wet they need to push out the front yeah it's it's a really, really cool thing. For that heroic proportion of live engineers out there who give a crap about your sound. We love you. We love you. Yeah, we really do. <laughs> um, and for those that don't, thanks very much. <laughs> uh, yeah. Right. So we've talked about wet. We've talked about the, the standard setup. We've talked about splitting the signal, having a basic wet-dry rig. We've talked about moving the, where we split from before uh, from after the modulation to before the modulation, okay? Um, now we're going to have a look at wet, dry, wet. But Dan, I haven't got no fancy ass pedal switching unit. How can I achieve wet, dry on a budget? All you need is... So the reason that the switcher uh, in this situation is really handy because uh, it gives us the ability to move the order of things around, switch things in and out, and keep you know keep everything isolated. If you don't have a switcher, it's absolutely fine. You need a splitter, and you need a stereo pedal. You, it just means you might need two splitters, actually. Yeah. You might need to isolate one of the outputs of the stereo pedal to get your third amp in phase as well. Yeah, so if you're just talking about basic wet-dry, you only need one splitter. That's right. Um, and you go, you set your pedals up as normal, and then you stick the splitter where you want the split in your usual chain of events. Yep. 
and that's it. As yeah, long as it right. does what we said earlier, as long as it does phase um, reversal and also power isolation, uh, signal isolation, mm -hmm. as long as it does isolation and phase reversal, it will be fine. Absolutely. Now, if you're running a wet, dry, wet rig, you will, you may well need a second isolation device, phase reversible device for the third amplifier. So when we talk about a wet, dry, wet rig, we've basically got it set up here. We've got the two rock is wet, the Marshall is dry, the Sovtec is wet. So wet, dry, wet. And how we achieve that is we have stereo wet effects. Okay. Um, so if we now go to the, uh, the wet, dry, we're going to add the Sovtec into the mix now with, with the Marshall and the Two Rock. Let's make sure that's on. Okay, cool. So have a play, mate. Okay, you sat there doing all the talking. I've I've gone like I've sat down there with my notes and get all the diagrams and I've got it all structured and everything. And and um, I got here this morning. I thought oh, I've done really well. I've I've you know I got all the you know planned it all and Mick's going to be really proud of me. I got here, I've forgotten half the stuff I needed and had to get my wife to drive up from Swindon. So I have been in a bit of a fluster, it must be said. It's However, okay. me and Simon messed around with uh, the overhead pedal camera and the uh, and a monitor. Uh, it looks great. It, it looks it's better. Really, really yeah, handy. We've got an over, new overhead pedal camera, if you haven't noticed yet. I'll do this again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the all three amplifiers on at once, okay? Uh, at this point, we have the modulation is uh, before, uh, sorry, the modulation is after the split, but we don't have anything on at the moment. We just have the, the tele going into all three amplifiers. So, sorry, if the modulation is going after the split, that means it's it's so only going into the wet amps. The modulation is before the split at so the moment. So it's going into all amps. So the, with the modulation, oh, sorry. The modulation is after the split. You are absolutely correct. The modulation is after the split, so the modula the modulation is only going to the, the outside amps, amps. Right. Cool. Right. So this is all three amplifiers on at once. Uh, so again, we have the Sovtec, we have the Two Rock, we have the Marshall, and we have all three on. Knobs. So, <laughs> even just with the three out of fives all on together, all adding a bit of character. There's How loud is that, Dan? How loud is it? Hit it. Hit it? Yeah. For everyone asking, how loud is that compared to how loud can we shout? Shout as loud as you can, Dan. Ah! Ah! There we go. 97. No, oh, that's not bad. How was the app? Uh, 104. <laughs> okay. Which is probably three times as loud as 97. Twice as loud. Okay, so that is all three amplifiers on. Now, if I put the uh, DNM drive on, that again is going to go to all three amplifiers. You can, it's just, it, man. That's the sound of ages. You can lean back on that sound. Because what's happening is the DNM drive is pushing the amps all at slightly different. Y exactly. In, in, so you're getting sort of three gain levels out of the three amps. One amps, ca the Marshall's caving in a bit. The, the um, lovely fella, feather bed to lie on. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. It's incredible. And then the uh, it's not overdriving so much next. I don't know where this is going. Uh, like your, your, your slightly firmer mattress topper, which, uh, <laughs> I don't know. And then... Uh, A lovely feather down. Yeah, and I'm not sure where that's going. Uh, right. Three <laughs> levels of gain anyway. So now if I turn the trem on, the, the tremolo will be going to both the wet amplifiers, but it, there'll be no trem in the center amplifier. Man, alive. 
Can you can you just do that and turn the center amp off again? Can, turn the center amp off. Is it possible to do that? Absolutely. While can. you're playing. Yep, I absolutely can do that. So. I'm not sure why turning around to look would make any difference, but I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Because not only do you get the effect of the effects in the outside amps, but you also get the bass coupling that happens of, the... of using yep. more than more than one amplifier. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blimey, spectacular. Right. Okay, so that is with the modulation after the split going to the two amplifiers. But now what we have is the signal from the modulation, after the modulation, is going into a stereo delay and a stereo reverb. Okay? So with the... Is that the Immerse? It is the Immerse. Uh, stereo. It is stereo. Yeah, stereo nice. ins and stereo outs. So nice. we needed... We needed um, it's okay to have a delay. Well, the, So we're using the delay before the reverb, and it's okay to have a mono input, but the delay needs to have a stereo out if we're going to have a stereo wet, dry, wet rig. And then if we're using a reverb after the delay, the, del the reverb needs to have stereo inputs to take the stereo feed from the delay yep. into the reverb, yep. and then the outputs from the reverb into the amplifiers. So wherever you begin your stereo journey, it needs to remain stereo thereafter. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Interestingly, when I first started getting into looking at signal paths, uh, and electronics is the same. If you think about the flow of your signal path like a pipe of water, and that's the easiest way to do it, you know, imagine the, the signal flowing from the guitar through a pipe of water, and it, you know, you know, going through all the pedals, and it splits, and then that goes through, and then it splits out. You know, when you're thinking of signal path stuff, I find that's really the easiest way to visualize it. Yeah. So like into your comes in the house. That's right. Drinking into the mains. water, shower room, interrogation room. <laughs> You got one of those too. <laughs> um, okay, so now... How <laughs> we laughed. <laughs> we love the United Nations on our back, Dan. But yeah. Um, I, I, I had a gag, but I can't say it. Right, so... You know one of the best names ever? Boutros, Boutros, Gali. Brilliant. Imagine being called Boutros, 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 Boutros. Did they? I think you should be called Daniel, Daniel. Daniel, <laughs> Daniel, Daniel. Mick, Mick. Yeah, Mick, Mick. Awesome. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, like I said, from the tremolo, the output of that is mono, but now we're going to feed into a stereo delay, okay? So if we go, um, here is our tremolo, and we're going to kick on a stereo delay. Now if I... Are the outside amps getting um, wet and dry, or are they just getting wet? At the moment, they are getting wet and dry. So could you do that again? And I'm just going to turn the Marshall on and off so you can hear what it sounds like with the dry amp in and without the dry amp I can in. do that here. Oh, okay. A bit old school me see. Power knobs on amps. So here's the delay. And then I was going to... So I'll play a chord, and then I'll, I'll bring the Marshall in and out.
further proof where it needed that you can afford to run the wet amps so much wetter than you ever could if you were just using them, you know, all your effects through one amp. Absolutely. I don't mean just if you were using all your effects through one amp. There's, there is so much delay going on there. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I, I'm going to add the reverb on top of that now, right? So check this out. Even when you're being really delicate, yeah. having that dry amp, the dry amp is getting the sound of this wonderful pick. <laughs> just just the way that hits the strings, it's all there. Yeah. As soon as I take that dry amp out, I mean, it's great, but it's all that definition and clarity is gone. Yeah, if you were to take the dry amp away and only use your effects into one amp, which is what most people do most of the time, yep. you really do have to turn the effect level down, don't you? you have Absolutely. To use way less effect. Yep. Um, you need more dry sound in there. Yep. And of course, what having the dry amp gives you is more dry sound. Um, okay, is there anything more to say about that, about wet, dry, wet, there, before, before I ask you the awkward question? There is, there's one more thing I want to show you. One way that some people do run the wet, dry, wet thing is they have no dry sound into the outside amplifiers. Which is actually the correct definition of wet dry. The, the, the sort of textbook definition of wet dry would be wet would only be the wet. So in the dry amp, all you're getting is no effects, right? You're getting, well, you're getting overdrive, but you're not getting, let's take a delay pedal. If you're in a wet dry setup and you've got a delay pedal as your wet effect, the dry amp gets no delay. Mm -hmm. In the wet amp, it gets the original sound and it gets the delayed sound. Yep. So some people would say that's not a hundred percent. That's not absolutely wet because what wet should mean is no dry at all. Yes. Of so course. it should only be, and that's what you're talking about here, isn't it? That's right. That's right. So again, if we use the uh, if we use the delay. Yep. Um, let me just turn off the shenanigans. So. What, what did you I'm turn off there? I just turned off the page and the trim. Yep. Okay, so what I'm going to do, uh, let's get this. And the expression pedal is doing... The expression pedal is just is just turning the effect level up and down. Sure. Okay. Right, so if I now turn on the delay... Um, let me turn off the Marshall. Okay, there it is. Here I'm still getting the original signal, right? But now if I turn the mix up to 100% and crank the expression pedal up, right, there's no direct signal there. You're only getting the delayed sound. Exactly. 100% wet. Right, now if I turn the Marshall back on, So the 
only dry sound is going to the Marshall and only the delays are going to the wet effects. If I make it a bit more obvious by extending that delay time, It's impossible to play now with the, with the, <laughs> what, without what, the dry sound. Yeah, what Dan so did there hard. is he turned the dry sound off, so all you were getting was wet effects. Uh, mad. We so we. I don't know. It'd be interesting to hear the mix, and I may mix accordingly. But where we're sat, the dry amp is probably a little bit quieter than we would normally have it because there's so sure. much in the wet, and the wet amps are both high headroom. So when you switch the overdrives on, um, they're kicking up in volume a bit more. So it might little be a little bit overkill on the effect side yeah me... but even though it is overkill and even though it's a tremendous amount of effect there's plenty of definition there yeah yeah so what i'll do i'm just i'm going to like make that less crazy yeah right so i'm just going to go in here i'm going to hopefully if i turn that down so again to the marshal out Marshall in. It's one of, while he's doing that, it's one of the effects of, um, if you use an amp with lots and lots of headroom and you use an amp that crunches up a bit earlier, what happens is you lose the front of the note on the amp that crunches and therefore any subsequent delays that come after it. Um, although there's no delay in the in the dry amp at this point, but you lose the front of that note. But what happens is when it goes into the higher headroom amp, you get the full attack of the note, which is all bright and clean and loud, and then that is delayed. So it still remains bright and clean and loud. Yeah, yeah. Into the outside amps long after this one has gone. I've got no attack left in this. So that is one of the challenges of, of choosing your amps to mix. If they're very different in gain levels, your transient experience of how they put those notes out is very different. Sure. And you might love that. You might have it set up for a specific purpose to actually work like that. Mm -hmm. But personally, I need them to be much closer together in gain level yep. so that they're doing a similar thing. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, yeah, so all I'm doing is I'm just reducing the the input now yep. to the delay, okay? Yep. So uh, again, if I get rid of you. Um, so here is my page and if I now turn the delay on The 
adding some reverb to that as well. So, you know, a, a trick that you can use is to put a volume pedal after the split to control the amount of volume going to your wet amplifier. Yeah. So that you can, you know, on the fly, you can just increase your your wetness, yep. you know. But now the dry sound um, is only in the Marshall, okay? But... So it's very, very cool. I was manually doing what Dan was explaining that you could do with, with a volume, volume pedal. pedal. Perfect. Uh, using the post gain function on G2 there. But if, yeah. Yeah. Turning the effects up and down. But turning, exactly. the, turning the outside the two effects. amps up and down. Yeah. So that's a scenario where the dry amplifier gives you all your initial tone. You're not using, you're not using the coupling of the amplifiers to get a big, huge sound. You just want your direct tone. Yeah. You know, is just the center amplifier and then all of the effects, but none of the direct sound is going to the outside too. But that is simply a matter of controlling the effect level. You know, as soon as I turn, get rid of all of my direct sound, then they're only receiving wet effects. Yeah. Really cool. Massive, massive sound. It's huge. With, with you know, with the effects of amps down a little bit, your sort of 80s rock all that sort of sitting underneath, but actually pretty massive. And then yeah. with it all the way up, it's shoegazy, it's, ambient -y. Yeah. And I know they're not the same thing, but they're both, can be both very heavily affected. Yeah, but it's not it's not an overly processed sound because you've always got that dry amp just sat there. Okay, the awkward question before we finish, effects loops. Effects loops. If you're running um, straight wet dry, you don't need to worry too much because you can run your wet effects in the loop of your amp mm -hmm. exactly as normal. Mm -hmm. Of, the, of your wet amp. In fact, in some ways, that can be an easier way to do it. If you don't have a complex pedal board or you don't want to get into splitting um, splitting things on your board, you can simply put a reverb and delay in the loop of your other amp. Yes. And split the signal and make sure you can phase reverse it. Yep. And then necessarily the reverb and delay will only be working in one amp because it's only in the loop of one amp. Bingo. So that's a super easy way to do wet dry. Yeah. However, things get really problematic if you want to do stereo wet dry using the effects loop wet dry wet yeah so or 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 just straight stereo yeah so because well so what you've got you've got the preamp of the amplifier that you're using for your dry tone and you need to feed that preamp tone into the wet signals because if you don't if you simply split the signal before that and then you use your your gain in the amp uh, as the, you know, the, the amp sound, then the, the wet uh, amplifiers will only be getting clean tones, you know. So what you need to do is split at the effects loop level. Rabia, a good example here? Uh, yeah, Rabia is great. So, but what Rabia does, um, he, so Rabia uses stereo amplifiers, but it's not wet dry. He basically has stereo effects in the loop of both amplifiers. So he's using both preamp sections. Both preamps are being sent into the stereo inputs of his delay, then to the reverbs, and stereo returns. So that's your that's your typical 
stereo setup using preamps. So you've got two amps. Two amps. You plug your guitar into the front. Yep. You go from the effects send of amp one. Yep. Into left input. He's actually split the signal and he's going to both preamps. Right. Then the effects send from both amps come out to the stereo in of the delay, yeah. stereo out of the delay to the stereo in of the reverb, stereo out of the reverb back to both effects returns on the amplifiers. Yep, yeah, so two amps, Yep. out, in, Yep. to the reverb, Yep. out, back to the separate amps. Absolutely. I'll put a diagram up so you can see. That's a standard stereo setup using delays and reverbs in the loop of the amplifier. And where are we with phase and... Um, isolation with that so it is a lot more complicated because you're having a lot more connections between the amplifiers some amplifiers are a lot less susceptible to that um, but ideally you still only want one path to earth all right so it's just something to be aware of if you're getting noise with that so does he need to use any additional um, humdingers or anything in that stereo world out yeah so he's got a, he's got a couple of humdingers connecting to the uh, the uh, out of the effects, uh, out of the stereo from the reverb, going to uh, sorry, out of the uh, the send and return from one amplifier. So one humdinger or two? He's one actually got one each. Th there's there's two, just on that on that send and return for that amplifier. Funnily enough, going into the input doesn't seem to have any problems yeah um, but it's all every amplifier is different as well, we're going back to effects loop every effect loop is different yeah if you you will have heard me and dan say so many times the problematic issues with using effects loops as it, things get more complex and that's a great example mm -hmm. because you can't just come out of two amps into a stereo pedal and back out again yeah to use them both in loops because you will get issues sure. especially with hum yeah right which is why he has the humdinger there exactly so so it's not straightforward. It's not straightforward. If you're doing a wet, dry setup using the effects of your amplifier, what you do is you come out of the um, the effects send into the splitter. The dry goes back into the effects return of the amplifier. That amplifier is now your core tone, right? But then the, the send from the splitter goes into your effects. Now, that can be rack effects or whatever, but that has a pre that, that those effects have to take a preamp level. Yeah. Right. But then what a lot of people do is they feed stereo outs from that into a power amp. You know, um, the a lot of these uh, like the quilter power amp, a lot of these little power amps that are coming out now. A lot of people are using that then to feed the outside two cabinets. So they're getting all their tone from the the one center cabinet, but they've got they've split from the loop and they're sending that line level to their wet effects. And then on the outside of those wet effects, after the wet effects, they hit separate power amps, and that feeds the wet yeah, cabinets. Um, I think both Larry Carlton and Robin Ford have done something similar. Right. It's not totally dissimilar to what Devin Townsend does with his, with his he, um, is it Helix he uses? Yeah. So what what like, at fractal wax. fractal fractal wax effects. So what yeah, what yeah. Devin does is he Larry, come, <laughs> Robin <laughs> Devin. Did Rabia get one? Yeah, we'll be one. There you go. One. So what Devon is doing, we've got you know, a humdinger setup very similar to this, um, but that is set up basically uh, in loop ten, right at the end. One output from the humdinger is going to his basically his. Uh, I think he uses a Victoria, um, like a big twin, this big clean sounding thing. Yeah. And then the other out two outputs are going to. The in, so one is going to an input of his axe effects, another one's going to his computer. But so the axe yeah. exactly. But the axe effects is just wet, yeah, and that feeds the power amp that then goes to his monitors. So he's just got his, his valve amp and all the lovely goodness, and then the axe effects is being hit by the same signal that's hitting his valve amplifier, but then adds this massive process stereo delay but again because he's hitting that that lovely toneful glorious valve amp in the center he can get as wet as he likes yeah yeah in the outside too but if, then, you, if you want to see an example of that we made a video with uh, Devin Townsend if you haven't seen it watch it it explains that a little bit 
Yeah, um, and it just and sounds, it sounds so even in the, mega. Even just, you know, with us there in a little room, it sounds unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay, unbelievable. so what, 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 as you started to explain the effects loop thing, my brain started to shut down, which is yet another oh. reason I use high headroom <laughs> amplifiers because I just can't deal with all the trouble. Sure. Because for every amp and every setup, it's going to be different. What are the takeaways? If you're... If you're using more than one amplifier, any connection in and out of that amp, you need to think about some things, yeah. presumably. Yeah. You need to think about, if you use more than one amplifier, you need to think about isolation and you need to think about phase relationship. And that's that goes for effects loops as much as it does into the front of the amp. Yeah. If, you, if you're splitting from the effects loop, then yeah, yeah abs exactly the same thing. Same thing. Yeah. Um, it's worth drawing a diagram. Yeah. Isn't it? It's worth drawing a signal. Take Dan's um, water analogy. Yes. And you imagine your signal is water and you draw out your pedals and you decide where you want them to go and draw them out on a piece of paper. That will get you a long way down the road of understanding. Because if you try and think think it through in your head, it, it's... Well, for me, it doesn't work. I have yeah. to sit there and, yeah. and write it down. I, there's, a, there's an app that I use called Graphio, which enables me just to, to make all the connections and I can see everything really clearly. I'm, I'm very much a visual person like that. And so it does really help me to see things like that. But once I see it, I can then imagine it, yeah. you know. Um, but if there's a really complicated, if there's a really complicated setup and I can just sit down and, and play with that and make all the connections, then, and I can visualize it like that, it's so much easier. Yeah. Um, but... You know, I think that the takeaway um, should be that this is something that is not, you don't have to have a, a crazy uh, switching system to be able to do this. You just need two amplifiers and a way to split the signal. At that, you know, to start with. For wet dry. For wet dry. Split the signal, flip the phase. If you can yep. do those two things. Happy days. Now, the final point, the final point, because I know this has been a long one. You mentioned takeaways. I'm getting a bit hungry, actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the final point. Sometimes, with the signals that are after the splitter, sometimes when you kick those on, you might find that your sound gets a bit weaker. Sometimes, the pedals themselves flip the phase. So imagine that we've got our wet-dry setup, right, and we're push-pulling, everything's lovely, right, but this and the signal, the split is here, right? We're push pulling, and the pedal that I turn on to go to my wet effect now does this. Oh, that's clever! I didn't think you'd get that right, but that's clever. Like that? <laughs> I turn the pedal back off. <gasps> oh, look at that! Turn the pedal on. It's never been better than this. <laughs> this is quintessential TPS brilliance. It's literally never been better than that. <laughs> if if. <laughs> if you can't understand that that's a t-shirt yeah <laughs> so that is one thing to be aware of that yeah, the pedals uh, you know the pedals can flip the phase so my um, I've got three pedals that do it my uh, Catlin Bread Belly Pop Deluxe does it right which is a pain in the bottom because when you turn the delay on your wet amp goes out of phase yes which is no good I found a workaround for it um, and what else does it I think the vent might do it Right. So it's, it's... It's something to be aware of. It's really annoying. It is really annoying. It's really annoying. And there are, there are various devices that you can use to flip the phase back the other way. Yeah. The, the, yeah. It's a pain. There, there are ways around it, but if you're not using a, a switching system, if the pedals aren't in a loop, it actually requires a mod to the pedal to reverse the phase mm -hmm. um, because the, the reversing of the phase has to be done... Uh, uh, at the end of the circuit before the um, before the switch. Um, okay, so it's but it's only out of phase when it's on, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah so yeah. so it's out of phase when the circuit yeah. is in line. Yeah. So you need to reverse the phase at the end of the circuit before it hits the switch. So that's you know there are ways to do that though. Um, yeah. For anyone wondering what the fix was uh, that I made was I leave the pedal on all the time, therefore the phase is the same and I just use an expression pedal to turn the um, delay level up and down. Yeah. And it's brilliant because there's a preamp in yeah. the Belly Pop Deluxe that is just superb. It's a full on stereo ping ponging win win. <laughs> Repeating is what it is. 
Perfect. Well, I think we got there. I think we did. Um, less inspirational tones today and more this is how you do it. Yeah. And if you want to watch the inspirational bit, watch our wet dry videos where we've done it before, ultimate wet dry wet and all that kind of stuff if you want to really hear it in action. Um, but yeah, those were the those were the basics and I hope the diagrams help. Here's what I do. I'm going to make the I'm going to make the diagrams available on our Facebook page. Oh, if you can do that, brilliant. Yep. So if you wanted to check the diagrams out, I'll make them all available all That's on amazing. our Facebook page. And then you can just go there and uh, engage with us on our social media platform. <laughs> yeah. Whatever that is. Yeah. 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 Does that work? Yeah. Is it still going, Facebook? I think so. Yeah. He was in a bit of trouble, wasn't he? Was he? <laughs> Moving on. Uh, right. Okay. So... Um, Finally, 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 we should have said this at the start. You don't have to have mega amps to do this. No. If you've got a Marshall Class 5 and a Blues Junior, if you've awesome. got two tiny little amps that you use at home, this will sound... Fantastic. Brilliant. And Absolutely it, it, brilliant. And in fact, it's almost more fun doing it with little amps like that because it can turn uh, a small amp, which can sound pretty small in, into in isolation, in, into a really awesome thing yeah, 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 that yeah. sounds incredible. So yeah. do it with whatever amps you have that you have to hand. And... If you've got your favourite amp, you know, the amp that you're on now that you've kind of got to and that's where you are and whatever that amp might be and you've got that crappy old practice amp that you don't love anymore sat over in the corner, do it with that. Yeah. Use the use your, your old thing that you don't use anymore. Absolutely. And try this because you will be astounded. Yep. Mix transistor amplifiers and valve amplifiers. Yep. Guess get it all going. Anything, literally anything. It's open season and, and it is inspiring. Yep. Awesome. All right. Cheers, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, thank you so much for watching. A massive thank you to our Patreons on Patreon, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm still trying to work out how to um, reply to oh. <laughs> to the... <laughs> some people have have uh, replied to post old posts on that. Oh, okay. I, yeah, anyway, but... We need to talk to Catherine. She understands all she that does, stuff. She does, she does. But uh, thank you guys so much. A massive thank you to our preferred retailers uh, in the UK and Europe is... Uh, and it's his music of Guildford, sorry, who have lent me this guitar. Uh, and who are going to Nam? Uh, yes. In some with beer and the boys. Yes, we'll be putting you to uh, Anderson's Nam coverage because uh, we're not we're, going. We're not going. <laughs> uh, massive thank you to uh, Rift, City. Rift City uh, in the, the US of A, and also a massive thank you to our friend Matt at Pedal Empire in Brisbane, Queensland. Uh, also, thank you to everyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and bought yourself a lovely T-shirt or yeah. hat or lots cup of you. Or... Lots of you got hats and T-shirts and. Uh mugs and sticker packs and stuff for Christmas I know because we packed them and sent them out yeah it's brilliant and uh, yeah so thank you very much thank you for, for buying stuff from the TPS store it's what funds us is what keeps us going thank you yeah alright cheers guys have a great week and we'll see you soon bye bye